Today I'm excited because I've been putting together this presentation. If you've been following me for some time, you'll know that every a few times every month I will do one of these um, presentations where I go through a topic which can then be found on my Learn Worlds courses um, um, platform. And this week, what I've been working on is this presentation about brain fog and perpetual intoxication. Now, for some people who don't have any issues in the pandemic, this may not seem to be too big a deal, but I was very excited as I worked through the science in preparation for tomorrow. So the point is, is if you are interested in learning about this, please click on the link in the description Make sure you like and subscribe in the process, but click on the link in the description so that you can understand what I'm talking about. What do you have to understand? So if you are not feeling this, you have people around you who are, whether they are at work, whether they're in the family, it, it, they just feel a bit groggy and they, they're not talking about it because very often it almost feels like a sign of weakness that, you know, you're not quite with it. Or people will be concerned about their job or something like that. Um, they, they'll be concerned about their driving. And so they don't really talk about it much. But this morning I had a brainstorm about the fourth ventricle. You've probably never even heard about this. It's a medical term. And I'm just going to take you through a few slides in preparation for tomorrow. And this is, again, reminding you that coming up tomorrow is this presentation. Join me if you want to hear the full thing. And um, this is, in my view, a very, very important part of my research because I don't just look at the outcomes um, around COVID and severe COVID and COVID vaccines. That may be what you hear me talking about a lot, but I'm also in the background researching and trying to understand the long COVID picture. Now, a lot of people don't even think it exists. Believe me, it does. It's very complicated and it's something I've been working at for over three years. So it takes a lot of work and we're still not completed. But this piece of the puzzle, I think is important. So if it's just the science that you're interested in, this may be worth it. So it's just a few slides in preparation for tomorrow, but here we go. The first thing you have to understand is the brain. And you've got a brain sitting in your head, and this is it here. And critically, if you look down at the bottom here, this is the cerebellum. And this connection bit is going to connect to the spinal cord, and it's called the brain stem. It's very important. A slight, a big, slightly bigger picture of it here. And this time the brain is cut in half, the corpus callosum. And this represents the brainstem region. It's right in front of the cerebellum, which controls the movement in terms of the smoothness of your movements. It's, it's a very important part. Tennis players will have a very active cerebellum because they have to be so coordinated or dancers. But your brainstem is right here. And just behind it, is this area called the fourth ventricle. Now, I'm going to show you just a few, but I'll go into it in more detail in the presentation. So this is really just giving you an, an insight into the concept that this area, and this is what I woke up this morning thinking about, and it clicked because it was connected to some research I'd done previously. And I realized, oh my goodness, I think this is the answer. And what I'll be tying it to is that issue about alcohol. And if you, if you ever thought about it, when someone is drinking and if you go through the sequence of their symptoms from being a little bit tipsy, a bit euphoric first, um, then they'll start to slur their speech. Um, then they'll have a little bit of balance problems. A lot of the problems or not problems, depending on if you're trying to get drunk, a lot of the, um, the manifestations around it are connected to an uh, intermediate product called um, acetaldehyde from alcohol to acetate. And I've got here a picture of the alcohol pouring in the brain. The truth is, is your brain doesn't like alcohol because it takes work to get rid of it. And it's because the brain is struggling to process it, why you get some of the symptoms that you do. 
But this is relevant when we think about the way how people feel with that tipsiness, that fogginess that occurs when they've had a little bit too much alcohol. And I've correlated that to what is occurring for a lot of people almost every day. As I said, they don't talk about it. And so here is the piece of the puzzle tied to the fourth ventricle. And again, I'll probably go through this in more detail uh, tomorrow so that you, you have a better understanding. But the, the simple overview is this. Inside the brain, and so this is not on the outside, this is on the inside, this blue bit are the ventricles. You have lateral ventricles, and this here is the posterior horn. So you have one on either side in each hemisphere. And then in the middle, they're both connected to the third ventricle which is sitting on the inside of the brain. And then that is connected by a tube, the cerebral aqueduct, to the fourth ventricle here, okay? And this is the fourth ventricle that I'm talking about. And this is it here. So I've pulled it out so that you can see what this ventricle is full of fluid. And this fluid is part of what bathes the brain all the time. Uh, to be frank, it's a really important aspect of brain physiology um, that has been underestimated. And when it comes to the brain fog, the alcohol intoxication, this is the piece of the puzzle that I'm focused on primarily, the fourth ventricle. Now, when we think about this, is that this fourth ventricle um, in each of the ventricles, they have a blood supply that produces the cerebrospinal fluid. That's why they're full of fluid. And when they produce it, it's absorbed and more is produced. But this little area in the brain is probably going to be one of the most important physiological aspects of brain function. Because when you look at this image here, and this is again the cut section of the brain, is cut in half inside of um, the right hemisphere. And the third ventricle will be sitting about here. And then it will connect through this tube to the fourth ventricle here. And this is the whole thing blown up. So this is the cerebral aqueduct. And so the cerebrospinal fluid moves through this area. And then there's a tent under the cerebellum. So it kind of expands a bit. And this inside here is the choroid plexus of the fourth ventricle, a very vascular structure that produces cerebrospinal fluid and continues to push it down the spinal cord. But this area is sitting immediately behind the brain stem. And what we will be going through tomorrow is why, if this area becomes activated, as I am predicted with the, the brain fog, it then has an impact on the brain stem and the symptoms. And similarly, when alcohol gets concentrated in this area of the brain, it has an impact again on the brain stem. And this is why I've connected the two bits, the alcohol intoxication mirroring the inflammatory process that is leading to brain fog. Because this is very important. As I said, so many people are struggling from this and they have no way out because they can't tell you you know they if they tell you you'll people will just say well come on just 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 you know get a life get on with it that's usually the response not realizing that they really cannot control that feeling of just being a bit fuzzy all the time and it is a big issue and it's very important for professionals executives who are working in high powered jobs, they really don't want anybody to know that they'll be having brain fog. Join us because I think once you understand the pathophysiology, there is a chance that you can then lead to solutions that will help people to feel better. So yeah, this is a quick talk. And again, highlighting this brain fog, perpetual intoxication, register in the link in the description, Join us as we continue this journey of trying to understand what is going on with people's health. It's not enough to deal with the issues and challenge the, um, the mistakes of the pandemic. We also need to find solutions 
that will help people to recover from the problems that they have faced. Have a great evening.